Today's experiment, we're going to be using the displacer. The displacer consists of a torque arm, a displacer, a multimeter, and a weights for calibration. Now, first off, we're going to use our weights and go through our calculations for buoyancy force and calculate all the weights that we need to for a five-point calibration. So, first of all, we're going to start with our calibration. Now it's time to calibrate our instrument. Using our 0 and our 100% weights that we've calculated, we're now going to apply them to the torque arm of our displacer. Now I've set out some weights already. We'll apply them to a little tray. Now using the weights that we're going to use today, we have 5.25 pounds, which is the weight of the displacer. We're going to place the weights on top of the displacer torque arm and then measure our 4 milliamps. At this point, we check to see if we have our 4 milliamps, which is our 0% level scale. Currently, at 4.25 pounds, we're at 3.2 milliamps. We're going to adjust the zero span on the displacer to uh, render 4 milliamps. At 0%, with, which is no level in the tank, and 0% submerged, we should be rendering 4 milliamps. Let's just check out how this instrument is calibrated. Currently, we're about 4.19 milliamps. So we're going to just adjust the zero screw on the instrument to render 4 milliamps. Okay, 4.00 milliamps. Now we're going to place the 100% level, or 1.69 as you calculate it, onto this tray and calibrate our instrument for 100% at 20 milliamps. Applying the weight to the torque arm again. currently reading 19.77, so we're just going to adjust it up to 20 milliamps. And 20.01 milliamps. So we're also going to check our calibration at least twice for an instrument. We're going to go back and put the 5.25 pounds on the tray, apply that back to the torque arm and see how our 4 milliamps, how close it is to our 4 milliamps. Slight sh shift in our zero from what we did before. We're at 4.28 milliamps. I'm going to adjust it once again, our zero screw, right down to 4.0 milliamps. Okay, 4.00 milliamps. Again, checking our 20% scale. Again, checking our 20 milliamp scale, or, or 100%. Apply the 1.69 pounds on and see if our 20 milliamps has shifted. We're at 19.73, and just adjust our span screw. Okay, 20.01 milliamps. I'm 
Now it's time to test out our calibration using the actual displacer. Now we're going to take the displacer and do a field test. By placing the field displacer on the torque arm, check out our 0% level and how our calibration is. Now currently right now we're at 4.01 milliamps. And we'll go up to our 25% range. At 25%, which we should be at around 8 milliamps, we are at 8.26 milliamps. We'll go up to check our 50%. And at 50%, we should be reading 12 milliamps. We're at 12.2 milliamps. Check our 75%. Okay, slightly have to tweak the solenoids to fill and drain. Uh, we're at 16.1 milliamps. We're supposed to be around 16, but our calibration seems to be pretty good. Check our 20 or 100 percent. And at 100 percent level, we're at 20.08 milliamps. Now for hysteresis purposes, we're going to go upscale just a little bit more, drain back down to 100 percent, and we'll go downscale, checking and comparing our 75, 50, 25, and 0 percent level. Okay, so go by, back down scale. We're at 20.01 milliamps for 100%. Check out our 75. And at 75% level, going down scale, we're at 16.12 milliamps. Let's check out our 50. And at 50% level, we are reading 12.28 milliamps, which we're supposed to be around 12 milliamps. But if you recall before, I believe that at 50%, we were slightly above as well. So we'll note that for our lab procedure and our write-ups. Let's go down to 25%. Okay, 25% level going down scale, we're at 8.33 milliamps. Now for our final step, our 0%. And at 0%, we're at 4.11 milliamps. This, my name is Kevin Ryan, and this will conclude our lab today. Thank you very much, and I'll see you soon.